Hey folks, Patrick from Orbit here today to talk to you about community power-up. So let's dig into what that means and what it can mean for you and your community. So before we dive in, this is a little bit about me. I am Patrick from Orbit. I'm our co-founder and CEO. You can find me on Twitter at Patrick J. Woods, and you can always drop me an email at Patrick at Orbit. Love. So we're the makers of Orbit and the Orbit model. The Orbit model is a framework built from the ground up to understand and measure communities. Think about it as like the sales and marketing funnel, but designed for community builders. And of course, Orbit the platform is our community growth platform that helps thousands of companies measure and grow and build relationships with more than 35 million community members across their communities. Give it a try at Orbit.love. Also the publishers of the Constellation Report, which summarizes the results of our survey around what tools community folks are using in production. And we're the publishers of Gravity Magazine, a quarterly print publication dedicated to the art and craft and the science of building communities. So I'm sure there's lots of gamers here in the audience today. Uh, in my adult years, I've gravitated towards games like Civilization V, like the grand strategy turn-based games, uh, sometimes city builders like City Skylines, but to this day, perhaps my favorite video game of them all remains Mario 3. Uh, yeah, uh, Mario 3. Uh, Mario 3 introduced lots of cool stuff to the gaming world, uh, lots of new enemies from, from Mario 1, saw a big evolution of Mario 3. They also introduced a bunch of cool graphics and art innovations, which you can really go down a rabbit hole and read all about. Uh, the top-down map view that you see here that's common in so many games was introduced in Mario 3. And of course, lots of power-ups for the Mario Brothers. Uh, here you can see all of them together. Uh, there's some familiar ones here, like the star that confers temporary invincibility or the flower that gives Mario flower power, the projectile weapons, of course. Um, in the case of mushrooms, they give Mario extra life or perhaps a second chance at life after getting harmed by a, 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 an enemy. Um, and then Mario 3 introduced some really cool ones like uh, the feather that gave Mario flying ability or the frog suit, which in addition to being super cute, uh, helped Mario become a better swimmer and also hop around. Uh, and maybe my favorite, the the giant boot for stomping around and avoiding the bad guys. And so even, even though all of these power-ups look different and do different things, each of these power-ups has one thing in common. They they all make the player more likely to succeed in each level along the way toward rescuing the princess, towards achieving that, that goal. And it's, it's a simple, but it's a powerful idea. Some of these make it easier to deal with obstacles and overcome enemies. Uh, other power-ups give the player a second or third chance when things go wrong. And here's the thing. Uh, I think that's exactly what a community team can do for a company. They can help the company navigate difficult obstacles to overcome various challenges, to manage those different things that inevitably arise in the course of building a company. And the insights that the community team can bring are essential for the company achieving its mission. So maybe not rescuing the princess, uh, but, but probably something else equally as admirable. And so here at Orbit, we have thousands of customers who, as mentioned, they're managing more than 35 million community members across all their channels. And so this gives us the chance to go really deep with community builders of all stages, of all sizes, and of all maturity levels. And you know, as we have these conversations and as the community industry continues to evolve, you know, there's no shortage of things for us to talk about and to learn from from our customers. But over the past, I guess, several months, maybe, that we, this one theme has, has, has come up many, many times. One thing has started to emerge from our conversations with our customers and our community. And that's this idea that a healthy community de-risks and accelerates every part of the business. Uh, to the rest of the company, the community and the community team can feel like a huge power-up that confers special powers and special abilities to all the other teammates. And the folks in the community teams are the ones doling out those power-ups. It's, it's kind of a fun way to think about it. So, you know, for product teams, the community team can power them up, can make their lives easier by making intros to community members for, for feedback, basically accelerating time to input and ensuring high quality. For marketing teams, the, the community team and the community itself can serve as almost like a R&D testing ground for, for messaging and campaign ideas uh, to get feedback from, from folks who really understand the community. And of course, for sales teams, the, the community team represents a potential source of warm intros when the time is right. And in the unfortunate case, when something happens to go wrong, the community team can serve as a vital back channel to key community members to get things back on track. So there's like lots of opportunities, I think, for community teams to really power up every part of the business. Um, but 
how does it happen? You know, how do these, what's standing in the way of, 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 of all of you becoming amazing uh, power up deliverers across your companies? Well, what we found is that there are some challenges there. Uh, despite the, the benefits of cross team collaboration, many companies have trouble getting this right. Uh, according to John O'Bacon, uh, he says there's a cultural mismatch here that many community managers and executives, they don't know how to talk to each other and instead they talk past each other. Um, this is from one of John O's articles in I think the first edition of Gravity Magazine. So uh, pick it up when you have a chance. And from what we've seen, this mismatch that he's getting at here can go beyond just execs and community managers, but to basically every department. So good news here is that we've learned from some of the best builders out there on how to overcome communication barriers and cultural challenges and to sprinkle on these power ups across their organizations. So uh, let's look at deeper some of the key concepts um, as you think about how to get alignment across your company as well. So <clears throat> the first thing that we've we've seen is that the the community teams that are excellent at delivering alignment, delivering outcomes, delivering power ups, they're really great at associating their work with the relevant business goals of, of the companies. Um, this gives them the credibility to influence the, the broader company. And it's essential with to, to get this foundational alignment because nothing else, nothing, nothing else works if this foundation isn't in place. Um, here are a lot of examples of how to think about this. Uh, for many companies, this will look like impacting various funnel related metrics. So um, relating community growth to things like awareness and acquisition or activation. Uh, in other in others in other cases, it could be mapping to things like product development or even recruiting. And we, we've seen that aligning community the aligning community team efforts really starts here as contributing to these these sort of key outcomes will ensure the community team always has a seat at the table uh, and is taken seriously. So this is sort of like the point of departure. And feel free to like screenshot this this slide. Um, there's some great examples here. Uh, we don't have time to go through every single one of them, but you know we've seen some of the best out there do this really really well. So once you've gotten that alignment, once you've al aligned the community team's efforts to other parts of the business, um, the best leaders out there that we've seen and we get to work with, they're really great at sharing stories and data. So they're, they're, this is both, this is qualitative and quantitative. As you're making that cross team impact, it's really important to in introduce the community context across the whole business. Um, and it takes both. So qualitative data there's there's lots of ways to think about this so stories from the community i think are a powerful way to influence internal discussions so on the calls on the qualitative side of things we've heard a few things <laughs> first uh, sharing community wins can be a great way to highlight what's going on in the community this could include a, a who's who of community members with updates on notable notable new community joins uh, as well as folks who are increasing their engagement or have recently reached a certain participation milestone um, themes of recent conversations, uh, things that community members have achieved thanks to your product or your community, or even community milestones, like the first time a member steps up to host their meetup. These are all great things to bring back to the company. Um, here on the right, you see a screenshot from, from Orbit. This is a view of actually like the most active, active community members over the past 30 days. Very helpful for guiding these discussions. Um, product feedback is another great way to socialize community input. So frontline community managers, they're they're often the ones getting barraged with, with product feedback, usually uh, much to the chagrin of these folks, often in their DMs, just like an overwhelming flood of product feedback. It's, it's usually outside of these formal channels, like maybe your Zendesk, your Help Scout, or your, your ticketing tool. And so that can be you know, a blessing and a curse. It's great to get that direct input, but also it's hard to, to manage it uh, sometimes because it's outside of those channels and in, in DMs. So uh, community teams can and should bring that POV back to the product teams. It's a great source of, of, of input and a great way to align the community and the product teams. Um, and, and finally, the, the, the community team should be able to share the overall vibe of the community back with the rest of the company. Um, and vibe is a little bit abstract, but it's also really important. And this could include things like, how did the recent feature release go? Uh, did people like it? Did it land? Was it buggy? Did it resonate? Um, is the content on the blog relevant? Um, are the events we're producing useful? Is the mix of speakers the type of the type of mix our, our community wants to see? Or do we need to get some more diversity of opinion, or diversity of background, et cetera? Um, is the tone of the community overall, is it healthy or not? So uh, these are important, but hard to quantify. So it's really up to the community team to socialize these ideas with the right folks internally. But when we think about sharing stories, these are some great examples of, of how to do that. 
and these might be shared in informal or, or, or formal settings, but sharing these stories back with the, with the rest of the company is essential. But uh, it can't just stop there. Uh, beyond the qualitative storytelling, there's there's lots of things you can do with quantitative data. So um, for our customers, it's sharing things like love and the distribution of orbit levels. These are, of course, proprietary metrics from the orbit model. Um, but these are these are things that our customers keep an eye on. Um, they look at per channel community growth and engagement. So, you know, which which parts of the server are, are really active, which channels in the forum are 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 proving to be the most meaningful. Um, community qualified leads is an increasingly popular um, thing to measure for for our customers. And finally, cohort based reporting is is increasingly common. So, you know, show me everybody that came to our events in the first half of the year. Are they more active in the community or not? Are they more active in the product or not? And so as you think about weaving in data with your storytelling, it's really great to buttress that that quanti qualitative information with some numbers. Um, this quote from Kurt Kippel sort of sums this up. It says, no one has time to dig through 15 pages of Discord messages. They want to see reports and trust that those numbers result in driving impact. Uh, it becomes harder, way harder to get buy-in for initiatives that are not backed by data. Uh, and that's why having the data is really important. It helps you ensure that your plans are understood and funded and that the, the story piece sort of speaks to the hearts of your constituents, but the, the data piece, the quantitative piece, piece really speaks to uh, the minds, if you will. So uh, we really think that the community is super essential, uh, but really represents one part of the larger business. So it's your responsibility to make sure the key folks have access to the right community, the community, right community-based assets and insights uh, in a way they can understand it. So meeting people where they are. So think about it first. You've aligned your 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 actions and your input to the overall community core company core metrics. Now you're thinking about how to bring story and data back to the relevant teams to share that impact. Um, as you're doing that, it's really important to put the data uh, where the right folks can see it. Uh, it's really important for people to be able to access and understand that data. Um, you know, silos are uh, really challenging for community teams if the rest of the organization can't understand input and impact. So how do you put the data where the other folks can see it? So I've got here a few methods here that we've seen work really well. So um, this is some very tactical advice, but again, this is from our, our users, our community, and, and some of what we do in Orbit as well. So um, first is you might think about building a running Notion, Notion database of meetings uh, with comments highlighting key takeaways. So um, in Orbit, in our like internal, internal Notion workspace, we actually have a meetings database that sort of is basically just every conversation that happens internally, externally. We tag community conversations, and then um, we can actually go through and highlight and pull out the key insights for various teams. And so it's it's pretty great to have the community conversations right there alongside other company conversations. So you can see, you might see, you know, notes from the all hands, notes from product updates, and notes from community conversations right there in situ, so that anybody can access and, and hear the the sort of quote unquote voice uh, of the community via those different notes. Uh, it's very cool. Um, a lot of our customers will push data to internal Slack channels for visibility. So um, you can see a screenshot here on the right from, from Orbit, uh, but basically our users uh, will often configure these types of alerts to keep an eye on what's going on in the community. So maybe you want maybe you want a notification anytime a member of your champions program asks a question in the Discord or opens a pull request or submits a support ticket, or maybe you want to see anytime a prospect gets active in the community. These are all things that you can configure with a tool like Orbit, but also bring into a Slack workspace so that the whole company has access to that data and can go click through and click in and see who this person is. Uh, it's pretty. It's a pretty powerful way to socialize the impact of what's going on across the community. Um, another way is standing internal office hours for the community team to host. So you, you can imagine on some sort of a cadence having uh, just a time for the rest of the company to come have a conversation with the community team about ideas and feedback and, and sharing insights about what's going on. Uh, shared dashboards are, of course, really important. So being able to socialize community impact across other other organizations is a, is a great way to put uh, put the data where other other folks can find it. Um, and then finally, pushing company pushing community data into the company data lake. This is one that is we're seeing more and more as people use our API to, to push their data into BigQuery or Snowflake or other types of tools to make sure that basically every team in the company can include community data in those other roll-up reports that they're doing, either from a biz ops standpoint, revenue ops, uh, you name it. And so 
there's sort of a spectrum here of, of sharing insights. Some are somewhat informal and look like notion notion notes and sort of keeping, um, you know, sort of a running tab of what's going on. Some look more like, you know, working with your data team to pull data in from, from your community or from your Orbit instance, for example, to make sure that data is available for query by other teams. But, you know, we've seen the, the best of breed um, community builders are, are, are increasingly good at this, uh, both the, the hardcore data stuff, but also the, the sort of more quantitative, excuse me, the more qualitative aspects of this type of storytelling. Coffee break. <laughs> All right, finally, we've seen that the best, the best, the folks who are best at this, the, the community leaders that we've seen really power up their whole companies. They're really good at involving other teams directly. So we've talked about data, we've talked about dashboards and sharing insights. Um, and that's all great. Like that's important because businesses run on data and dashboards and insights and things like that for better or for worse. It's just really important to have that data available uh, as your organization matures its community ops program. Um, but the really best in class programs uh, and the best in class community leaders have become excellent at pulling in other teams directly. This is really the best way to build empathy uh, beyond just the data. Um, Tony from our team, Tony Blink says that connecting colleagues, colleagues directly with the community is actually the most powerful way to amplify their vo voice. First party feedback is always valuable and it's usually more timely. So, um, you know, Having data is important. It helps ensure plans are understand and funded. Um, but really getting people right into the heart of the community is, an, is the best way to create value. So um, just some advice here, some, some ideas for getting everyone involved uh, from some of our customers. So we've seen engineering teams uh, have rotations for community support. So you might have your official support channels you know, in your tool like you know, Help Scout or Zendesk or something like that. Um, inevitably, your community members will ask questions in the forum. So, you know, if you're if you're if you're seeing that happen, if you think that's important, um, some of our customers will actually staff an engineering rotation to respond and, and be present in the Discord or in the discourse, um, the discourse forum, or or even on Twitter. Uh, that's a great way to do it. Um, in fact, Notion's developer Slack is actually run by the platform engineering team. That's a pretty pretty great example. Um, you can also pair employees with segments of the community. So. Um, the, I think the default view is often just, you know, send send employees to the server, send them to the forum, just go go and have a chat. Um, but what we've seen is that when there's a little more deliberate uh, effort here, you can actually pair up your your employees with cohorts of the community. And if you think about this, you know, a 50-person company, if each of those people has 10 community members to chat with once a month, it's actually 500 recurring relationships. And what would that mean for the community overall, the health of the community, the, the 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 vibe that the members were getting? If you know this type of input and and this type of um, collaboration was happening with employees of the company, and of course for the company, there's tons of there's tons of benefits. You know, learning relationships, accelerated trust. Um, this is it's it's a really you know sort of like interesting power up to think about that if you can connect the this many number this many folks from the core company out to the community, what would that mean for, for those downstream metrics? So those are just a few examples we've seen work really well uh, and trying to provide some structure to uh, community organizations as they're trying to connect the sort of broader community with um, with folks back in the team for those power-ups. So, you know, at this point, you have ideas for sharing stories and data from your community back to the broader company. You've got some tactical thoughts for delivering those learnings and for getting everyone involved. And you can be confident that all your effort is aligned with the overall company strategy because you started with first things first. So uh, the only thing uh, left, I guess, is to pick your pick your power-up mascot uh, and and go forth and, and deliver power-ups. Uh, with that, thank you very much. Again, I'm Patrick. Uh, shoot me a note on Twitter or via email if you have any questions about this. But in the meantime, good luck out there. <laughs>